thank you. Thanks for the introduction and uh, thanks for giving this opportunity to present uh, um, how we can leverage uh, automation with the help of automation learning models. So let's dig deep into it. So this, uh, as, you, as you just say, introduced like I'm Vinay Reddy and the CEO of Cognibor Solutions. So um, with 17 plus years of experience and uh, Cognibor is serving the clients across the globe since four years in automating the business process. So Cognibor Solutions is a RPA niche uh, practice organization. So uh, uh, to start with, uh, so our session is on RPA with automation learning models. So let us talk about RPA first as a brief introduction. Like what is RPA? Everybody knows here like so RPA is a robotic process automation which actually automates the mundane or the repetitive task or boring repetitive task. So this is not just about the only automation, but it is adding the value to the existing process or the as is processes. So in 21st century, RPA is the game changer for the business process. When the 2020 or when the 2018, uh, during the years of 2018 and 2017, the organization started going for the auto, going under automation because they wanted to see the reduce in errors and cost effectiveness and you know uh, saving the man hours. So that is where the RPA came into the picture and every other organization or every other big industry started exploring RPA. So to start with AutoML, let us have a simple description about auto machine learning models. So what is AutoML? It's a Google platform uh, uh, machine learning models where, so it's a cloud-based tool actually, where you can uh, create your own machine learning without having knowledge of your uh, without having knowledge on data science, you don't need to have a super core knowledge or super core skills on the machine learning, how to create the data structures, all this kind of stuff. But still, you can just do the drag and drop of kind of thing where you can build your own models or you can do labeling of the particular model and you can deploy to your solution as simple as that. So why we are discussing auto machine learning models um, along with RPA now? Because the there are so much complexity that we have been facing since one to two years, right? So where during the years of 2017 uh, to 2018, when the automation started uh, its uh, peak or, or every other organization starting understanding of the what the automation can uh, now benefit them. So that is where every other organization started looking into it and every other organization started going under automation. Now the more and more complex scenarios came in, coming into the picture to automate, where so much of data discrepancy, where so much anomaly, uh, uh, you know, being uh, what you call, um, uh, we can see uh, in the claims processing, let's say, or uh, fraudulent claims, right? So these type of complex areas use need a machine learning model to address that, right? So that is where the Google Auto ML helps us. So that's why we are discussing in this session with the RPA with Auto ML. So as we just said, the need for combining RPA with AI for complex process. So let's say we have a bank business process, business process in the bank where you need to work with thousands of data, thousands of documents, right? So where let's say there is a loan process, loan application, where every other time you are spending hours on verifying each loan application document where you sometimes we fail in finding the abnormality where we find where we fail in finding the uh, uh, fraudulent loan application right we are spending hundreds of hours manual hours in that so while automating this business process when the document goes to when the rpa bot kicks and take the document from a particular folder or mail system and started processing it at the same level in, in parallel with that bot rpa bot when we deploy this machine learning model it will actually verify the anomalies that actually getting detected in the documents if any discrepancy happens or if any if it see if it sees any discrepancy that will automatically report so that is where rpa and ml works together if at all any fraudulent claims that get uh, you know detected that will be sent for the human in the loop where the for the manual verification 
right? So these are all the complex process that can be addressed with the help of AI and RPA. So just to dig more about Google Auto ML, so, so Auto Machine Learning Model is a brainchild of Google, like, which is simplifies the creation of machine learning models. As I just said, you no need to be a data scientist to create these machine learning models. Right? Even a non-expert can perform this. So why the Auto ML model? Why we, why we can prefer Auto ML model? Right? Because it's a robust. Right. So training of high quality models made possible with limited ML expertise. You don't need to be superhero in data science. You just need to know that what are the data that you wanted to, what is the data set that you wanted to use? What is the actual output that you are looking for actually? So what is the discrepancy that you want to find out? That's it. So you can build your own machine learning models. So facilitates advanced techniques like transfer learning and neural architecture sets. So let's discuss this transfer learning here. Let us let us talk about a simple scenario here, where uh, those who already got uh, knowledge on RPA, how we develop RPA, right? So, for example, let's say I am uh, uh, processing a data where there is a date field in the data. The date field can be of any type, like for for example, it's a, it's of any format, like DD MMYY or MMDDYY. So that is the input which you are getting, but the thing is, you already trained the model. If you find any discrepancy in the date format, right? You wanted to auto correct it, right? So that is where you are actually decreasing the efforts of development here, where the bot is automatically finding the discrepancy during the development of automation. What happens is you need to write hundreds of lines of code to find out these discrepancies or to format the date formats, right? The input date formats. So to avoid all this, what you can do is you can simply deploy the RTML model to verify for that date, date format discrepancies. So if you can see here, transfer learning is one technique which the RTML model generally utilizes is something like, let's say you are trying to, uh, you actually labeled some cars images in the backend previously. Now you, you are having a set of machine learning which actually detects the cars. Now, whenever you are trying to find the trucks, so the same ML model, you can take the help of the same ML model to define this, this is not the car, right? So it's kind of reutilizing the existing models. So that's what we call as transfer learning. It helps a lot in decreasing the efforts of the machine learning models itself. So it's all about customization. Every other solution or every other business process is different, and it is very easy to customize according to the business requirements. So integration across Google products makes seamless function. Everybody knows the Google Cloud Platform is very having very big ecosystem where you can integrate with any RPA uh, technology. So actually, who gets benefits with these automation learning models? So let's say. As, as I just predicted here, like imagine there is a retailer predicting future sales by analyzing historical data. Are a healthcare provider building models to predict patient readmissions? The possibilities are very big. So I will tell you one real-time example here where we work for a, uh, a hospitality group in Hong Kong, it's the biggest uh, uh, hotel group where they every year they go for the budget forecasting. So what happens there actually is like they they uh, actually forecast the budget that is going to happen. I mean they need to put for the upcoming year. So the data that they required is from the previous year where they wanted to see how many existing uh, visitors, right, going to come again, visit again, right. So these type of data analytics they do every year. So you don't believe that auto ML model that we have deployed has predicted with 72% of accuracy. So that's the, that's the uh, you know, advantage of auto ML models. Where before to that, they were somewhere around 12 people were working on this, on this data every other year. Right, with the, with the help of auto ML model, where we just predicted, like based on the historical data, we predicted that this is the probability that we are going to get, right? So it's a combination, it's not only Google Auto ML previously, it was the combination of sentiment analysis, which we did as part of the same business use case. So based on the sentiment analysis, we predicted and the budget forecast has been done. 
So that's the advantage of RTML RTML models. So, so another brief description about uh, RPA. So RPA is not only repetitive, not only automating about the repetitive task, or it's also adding the value, right? So how we are transferring as is process, how we are transforming as is process into the to be process, right? After making it to the to be process, so what is the value that you have been adding? Are we decreasing the turnaround time? Are we reducing the errors? Are we saving any FTE? Or what is the ROI, returns on investment that we are having with the, auto, with the automation of this part, that particular business process? So this is about RPA. So I will tell you one example here where we automated one of the business process for one of our staffing solutions company in US. So the turnaround for time for that business process it was a pre-screening business process. The turnaround time for the business process was 32 hours. From 32 hours of manual business process, we make it to 18 minutes. 18 minutes of turnaround time. I mean, now the after automation, the turnaround time has become 18 minutes. So this, this is not only the automation, this is the value addition where the customer is now, you know, handling more requests from his customers. So now let's talk about the impact on the business. Enhance the productivity as you just said. So delegate the routine task to RPA. Following means if since it runs on the business rules, so it will give you what you are actually expecting. Right. So cost efficiency, which is another important uh, benefit. Right. So better customer service. So I will tell you one example here to understand better customer service. It is a simple example here where you you take service in uh, a customer service industry where when you call a customer service what happens like you they put you on hold for two minutes and they'll uh, you know in, uh, ask you a question like once they ask you a question they put you on hold to verify the uh, information about you in the system all right so with this type of manual uh, job what they do they generally answer 30 calls per day let's say but when you automate this business process, whenever you call them and you ask a question, if that particular process has, has been automated, with the help of a single click, the bot goes into the background of that particular user details in their system, and the screen is already in the front of that particular customer service agent within a fraction of seconds. So what is happening is they no need to put you on hold to answer your question. And the calls count right here the productivity gets increased so with the manual efforts they might be addressing 30 calls per day with the automation they might go to 70 or 80 calls per day because handling each customer the turnaround time is getting decreased right? so this is the advantage of rpm so now the blend of rpa and automation because both of them are in two different areas where automation learning models are effective in um, uh, uh, finding the discrepancies or uh, uh, doing the data analytics, right? Where the RPA is automating the things. When the both gets joined, so kind of you are having your superhero with you in your system. So digital assistant, which is a superhero for you, right? So that's the future. That's the future of RPA plus machine learning. So, so RPA is traditionally we know that is for the repeated task, but when you combine with the automation learning model, so that is where we call it as hyper automation or intelligent automation. Now the RPA started getting the more intelligence with the help of these machine learning models. Now, so it's not about only working hard, but it's also working smart, where you are actually decreasing the time of the each transaction. So if at all we want to take the use cases of industry, right? So let us take industry, few industry use cases where we can deploy this powerful duo. Right? Let us take the industry use case of manufacturing. So whenever there is a prediction 
in the inventory management like let's say what happens when when you when you take uh, use case of automation in manufacturing industry that can be customer service that can be production planning that can be inventory management that can be order processing right reconciliations anything right so in these cases what happens like the bot goes into the particular system and looks for the inventory and if the inventory is low it will automatically creates the order or puts an order to the vendor so this is what the rpa bot can do but what the machine learning can do here is since it has been already trained with the data the customer data what happens is like it will uh, set the historical data and finalizes how much quantity that you need to put for this order for this particular period based on the historical data that has been taken right so you no need end up so you won't end up in you know ordering bulk items right so that is another one which is actually increases the productivity or which is actually saves the revenue or burden on the manufacturing industry to go for the raw material bulk orders right that is the one of the industry use case which we can think of now and another one is insurance industry which we take a second one for the use cases so what happens with the insurance industry so in the insurance industry claims processing is the most common business process that we can think of right so whenever there is a business process whenever there is a claim that got uh, applied from the business i mean from the user or the policy holder or the agent what happens here as a rpa bot it will go and pick it from the source that can be mail or that can be from any shared folder or that can be from a system something like sap or salesforce right whenever there is a claims get generated the bot gets triggered going to there and get the details of the particular claim now they will that will process according to the business rules or the flow that you have designed but how you will know that whether that is a whether, whether that is a uh, you know a good claim or a fraudulent claim right so that is where the machine learning model jumps in when you deploy this machine learning model along with this automation solution the ml model will help you out in finding whether that is a fraudulent claim or a correct claim right so based on the preset values based on the historical data that, that you train right so this one actually helps the insurance industry before it gets processed before even the claims get processed in the in the first step upfront itself it will classify the claim as a fraudulent claim So the next one is hospitality where i uh, just before to this also i explain this all right so whenever there is a uh, there is a data that you need to you know uh, i mean uh, something like you are having some historical data where you want to analyze and based on that uh, you need to analyze the data and you need to provide the budget forecasting let's say right so that is where we automated so in the hospitality industry there are hundreds of bundles of data you see where there is reconciliations need to be happen right so that is where the most useful uh, use case for the rpa but when it comes to the automation learning model where you will use this auto ml in the hospitality industry is to actually predict the upcoming uh, 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 what what you call um, upcoming occupancy right so what you can predict for this is like how many rooms that you are that the uh, based on the previous historical data or historical data how many rooms that you are going to get occupied what is the budget that you can put like what is the infra right and based on few, which few data there is one more use case which you can take think of in the automation learning i mean deploying the machine learning to the rpa is with the help of the previous data either this user already uh, visited this hotel or not whether he already stayed in this or not if it is already he stayed so what was his preferences in dining so what was his importance so what was his outing priorities so based on that it will customize the uh, it will customize the uh, hosting for his, for the next visitor so this is the another use case where we can deploy the machine learning with the automation in the hospitality industry so to go with implementation strategy 
so we cannot go with the uh, big bang kind of thing to start with so every other initiation should start with the small same year also so the next one is the groundwork need to be done based on the requirement what is the business process that you are actually prioritized to go for the automation and which business process you wanted to see that you can work with the machine learning so that it will reduce the implementation efforts also right so choosing the right architecture because this is the combination of rpa and machine learning right so choosing the right architecture is also tool also affects how you are going to implement it right for example let's say ui path automation where or groupism or uh, work fusion right so these are all way advanced in adopting the machine learning models uh, or to integrate with machine learning models this, the ecosystem of these particular tools are too vast right so choosing the right tool for your requirement is also another strategy right so integrating the google automation learning models which is which model can give you the more accuracy for example let's say there is something called google vision right that's also one one automation model which we have with the google we, so how you can utilize that whether you can utilize that for the image labeling or you want to utilize for the data discrepancies it depends on our particular business process requirement right so choosing the right google machine learning model is also very important and monitor and optimize like you have to complete you have to monitor it continuously and monitoring and optimization is a continuous process right it's not like we already developed and we deployed it right because there is hundreds of documents something let's say if you are going for the idp right intelligent document processing where you extract the data from the documents right and if it is a unstructured document that comes in as part of bundle somewhere around one document has uh, one foreign document came in uh, came in the bundle of the already pretend models pretend documents so this particular document will get classified as unstructured or anomaly in the uh, bundle of documents where that will be sent to the manual verification right so and the manually it has to get trained for the next upcoming same type of documents to classify right so this type of monitoring and optimizing is a continuous process that has to go on so challenges and solutions is data quality right so what are you input right so that is a, that is the data quality actually impacts whether it's a bad data or how random the data is right that actually impacts the output also right incomplete data inaccurate data right so next one is system compatibility so all the systems there are few, so many so many organizations still using legacy systems right your particular system that you wanted to put under automation that may not be supported right system compatibility is still a challenge and resistance to change there are some uh, business users there are some uh, 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 groups where we we already seen that they wanted they don't want to go for the automation right or they don't want to apply this ai right so that is another challenge and the uh, next one is how we can overcome these challenges data quality for the data quality you have to have validation checks for every input data and for the system compatibility you should have a blueprint before you go for the automation there is a feasibility analysis study which we do before we go for the actual development of the automation or the actual implementation of the ai so this feasibility study must we must do the feasibility study right so resistance to change we still having problem with so many organizations even today so the only solution to resistance changes is communicating with the users properly and showing the benefits what are the benefits that we are going to get as simple as it so future trends as we already know autonomous so more fascinating word nowadays so what is autonomous self resilient like it can work on its own right so as the ai is is as it's a blend of ai and rpa right rpa is becoming autonomous right now is a trend of autonomous bots so something like this let's say let's take a simple example here for example let's say so i automated a business process where the data uh, i take the data from a uh, document which is getting populated in the salesforce 
I read the data from that Excel file or any document. Then I need to put it into the SAP somewhere, some, somewhere in the form where I found that the data, the date format is not proper. Where when I when the bot enter the data, now it has thrown the error. That based on the particular business law of that particular field, it has thrown the error saying not the actual date format. Then the bot automatically rectifies the date format. That should happen. Right? These are all the future trends that we are going to see with the autonomous bots. Right. So whenever there is a task you already completed. There is one more area of the future trend is whenever you are already completed a task with the bot, then the bot learns this pattern. Then it will apply, then it won't put much efforts and it applies the same kind of pattern in the next transaction also. Let's say I'm, uh, I'm actually automating a, uh, uh, let's say thousand records from a data and for each record, I have to do the same kind of um, uh, pattern where I need to log into the SAP, I need to search for the particular user ID, and I need to uh, look for the user details, then I need to enter the data that has been taken from this record. So if this happens for every row here, so when the bot completes the first record, then it will actually learn from this pattern and perform the same with the second, right? So there is kind of semantic automation. This is one of the, use case of future trends one of the use case of future trends where the bot actually learns from its previous task right so that is also another future trend that we are going to see so just the takeaways key takeaways from this session is powerful geo which is the ai and ml i mean uh, rpa and ai and google auto machine learning models helps that brings extraordinary business efficiency, accuracy, and sophistication. And security, automated process reduce the errors. And that is very common security risk, right? So AI enhances the security protocols. It complies with the every security rule of the organization. Right? That is what we can expect. So challenges which we are having in, in implementing the RPA with machine learning is the data, input data uh, quality, right? system compatibility and resistance to change in the future for sure the future is exciting where we can expect the autonomous bots with the help of this blend so i leave the session for question and answers thanks that's it from my end Thank you so much, Vine, for this very insightful presentation. Uh, I think it's a very interesting topic that you um, put forward, and especially the lessons learned, I think, is very powerful. Uh, because a lot of people can uh, take those into their day-to-day -day practices as well. I saw a couple of questions um, coming in during the session, and we still have some time. So if it's OK, I will moderate a few. Yeah. The first question is, um, and I think it's a bit more of a definition question, is how do you differentiate between hyper automation and intelligent automation? Okay. So hyper automation is something like, so it's a, see, nowadays the trends has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, about the fascinating words, right? So intelligent automation and hyper automation, both are same most probably like, so previously, when, whenever these RPA started, right, it was plain robotic process automation when there was no intelligence was adopted. Something like you do the desktop automation, you based on the business rules, go to this, do this, after this, do this, after this. That was a plain robotic process automation that we can say. Whenever we started adopting the AI skills, something like NLP, natural language processing, right, or OCR, optical character recognitions. Right. So to read the data from the, uh, let's say, I want to read the data from the PDF, right? So in this case, normal technology will not help me to perform this automation. Right? That is where I need to integrate OCR, optical character recognition, which is also a part of AI, right? Artificial intelligence. Now this RPA has become intelligent process by blending this OCR into the RPA tool. Now this RPA has become intelligent process automation tool, as simple as that. So whenever you integrate data science models or, or machine learning models into the RPA, so if at all we want to go for level up with another fascinating term, which is a hyper automation. Mm -hmm. 
Good. Um, would you say in that regard that it's also um, a perspective in terms of the skill of an organization or is it just to do with the technology that's underneath it? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you said. Would that also have to do, because with hyper automation, you also generally see a lot of focus around the, the skill with which uh, things are being automated. Whereas, as you mentioned, OCR is, is more towards the intelligence part. So would yeah. that be a, a similar di a differentiation? Yes, exactly. Okay. Good, thanks. Then I see uh, some other questions. I'm going to start with the one from Jamila. Um, what kind of training or skills development do you recommend for professionals interested in specializing in the integration of automation AutoML? So for AutoML, you don't need any specialized skills or the core skills. You just need to know the what is the data that you are actually uh, trying to uh, look for the discrepancies, the input data, and what is the expected output that you are actually targeting. So based on that, the labeling should be accurate, right? For example, let's say you are performing the you are performing the automation of some images, let's say, or extracting the data from the images, let's say. So in those cases, it's a complex business process, right? So what is the input that you are actually input, giving? So that is one part. And what is the actual output that you are actually expecting? So based on that, you need to go for the multiple trainings, right? So here, because when it comes to the automation learning, so it's a tool, you don't need to have much core skills, like you just need to follow the steps, that's it. Very clear answer. So um, next one that I have for you is, um, could you discuss the scalability aspect of integrating automation with AutoML? So how can businesses ensure that the solutions remain scalable and adaptable as the complexity of data scenarios increases? So it's actually, uh, so when it comes to the machine learning, right? That, that is where we can think of scalability, right? Like for example, let's say you are having multiple comp complex scenarios in the same business process. You can deploy any number of ML models right so something like let's forget about uh, ml models let's say so <clears throat> we already have python scripts right so we started with simple automations now it's already we are calling it as intelligent process automation the next level is hyper automation or super automation or autonomous bus whatever it is right so what is this are all, all the scaling up of the existing or legacy automation system right so when it comes to the scaling of industrial level or particular organization level right Whenever you start with, you start with simple process, you prioritize simple process where you can see this, this can give us the ROI, right? You take that as a priority. So you start do the feasibility analysis of the process. Let's say you have seen some three to four uh, areas where you wanted more advanced or you need to blend ML into the RPA. That's what you thought, right? So this is where you can go in and verify what are all the ML models that can help. Like first you can see whether this can be done with the simple uh, things like uh, running a Python script, right? So if this is not happens, then you can scale up, right? Like you can, you can uh, uh, integrate the machine learning model. So once you've done this, what is the output that you are getting from this uh, integration? Whether it is sufficient for your requirement or you want to go up? Right. So that is where, see, nowadays what is happening. So there are a lot of, lot of machine learning models we, we have in the, uh, of which we are coming, which we are getting as the out of box solutions, right? Predefined, pre trained, right? So you can take that from the marketplace. You can just utilize it as simple as that. When it comes to the scalability, right? Right. When it comes to scalability, that can when when you blend this uh, machine learning, that is where you can actually address any number of requests like this. It's not limited to one, right? So you can address multiple logics with one ML model, or particular few ML models are restricted to few logics only, right? Depends on our requirement. That's what I can say. Good. Thank you so much for sharing your um, perspective on that. I think that's a very interesting answer as well. Thank you. Good. Finney, um, thanks so much for being in our program this week. Uh, sincerely looked, uh, enjoyed listening to your presentation. I hope you found it interesting to present during Automation Days as well. Yes. Uh, look forward with, to working with you for many, many more years uh, to come. So thank you so much for being a, a part of uh, our conference this year. It's been an absolute pleasure.
thanks thanks a thanks a lot for this opportunity and thanks guys for meeting you all here so uh, pleasure meeting you yeah. thank you so much yeah. good for everyone else then we are already starting to prepare for our next session and during our next session we will have uh, once again a centralized uh, session in which we are going to discuss a very interesting statement automation and ai are they allies or adversaries join me in the panel that will start in 20 minutes from now where I will be discussing this statement with Mahmoud Nassar, who is a senior solutions consultant at SSNC at Blue Prism, and Rafut, who is the regional vice president of Automation Anywhere, and Keng To Chan, who is the head of automation platforms at British American Tobacco. A great panel of experts, which I think can share quite a bit of interesting insights into these different topics. Look forward to seeing all of you in 20 minutes from now when we're gonna start the panel discussion.